Today we're going to talk about what are the things that are driving the adoption of Jupiter in the Enterprise. Um, it's funny because the, the last talk you hear, the, the analogies are, are very close, I think. If you look across the private sector and public sector and research departments, we're all working towards a common goal. How do you collaborate with other people? How do you deliver smarter, better analysis faster? And I think there's a, a very common lineage between all the teams that are working on this, you know, regardless of the sector that they're in. So it's exciting to see. Um, my, my journey in data science is probably a little different than some. Um, I, uh, I, I got my first uh, taste of uh, using data science when I was at Yahoo. I was fresh a uh, year or two out of my MBA program and uh, was very good at Excel and you know, could do some basic SQL, but uh, I had never interacted with anything uh, that had to build a forecast or build a model, really. Um, and uh, the, the team I was working with at that time was working on something new. They, they said, hey, we've got you know, this great data uh, coming out of our search infrastructure, and we're trying to find customers for that data. What can you guys do with it? And there was obviously a big uh, competitor that we were looking at at that time uh, that was in Mountain View. And uh, we were trying to understand uh, how were they performing in the display market and uh, how were they doing in terms of search monetization relative to us. And there was really no way to tackle that problem at scale given the size of the data because basically what we wanted to do is look at the entire internet and say, how are they doing? How far penetrated are they in the publisher ecosystem? We wanted to look at every single piece of search data and say, how are they monetizing it? Um, so the team had to invent something. And that, that thing they invented was Hadoop. And uh, the, the teams that were uh, doing the data science work back then weren't actually called data scientists. They were called you know, data strategists or um, R&D specialists or strategic data services. Uh, but the, the goal was clear. Uh, we need to understand how to interpret these large data sets, uh, build a model, uh, understand our position relative to the competition. So it was really exciting to see that that was possible. And we used open source tools, and you know, an open source tool was built around that. There were other uses for it as well, but that was one of the first use cases for it. Uh, moving forward, uh, the next part of my journey was in a uh, marketing analytics company. And you can see the, the number of logos increases over time here because the uh, things that you could do and the, the pace of the market developing uh, continues to evolve. So uh, this is where we start to get into uh, using uh, many of the new uh, machine learning libraries, doing uh, optimization and forecasts. Uh, probably a lot of familiar logos to people in the room here. And then at data science, really what we're trying to do is to bring together that ecosystem of tools and infrastructure and uh, deliver a platform to the companies that we work with that uh, takes some of the pain and friction out of connecting all of those pieces together. So what we've seen is uh, there's a gap in the market today. Um, I think everyone sees the opportunity in applying uh, data science and using data science to uh, drive their business forward, to grow their business. But very few are measuring and quantifying and understanding the business value of applying data science. And this gap is something that should concern everyone in the room because if people aren't seeing value out of it, if they're not understanding it, if they don't know how to measure it, uh, there's going to be challenges in uh, continuing to move the market forward. Um, so we, we see this picture as being a very common uh, framework that data science teams are working in. They have many stakeholders pulling them in different directions. Uh, they need to work with all of these stakeholders to make sure they're all on the same page in terms of the goals of the model that's being developed. Uh, they want to understand the data. They want to understand the history of the data and why the data is set up in the way that it is. And as they work through different steps in analysis from connecting to data sets to building models to deploying models to measuring the results of those models, uh, 
there's roadblocks al along the way. So getting access to the data is usually one of the first roadblocks. Uh, you know, how do you work with that IT team to make sure that you can access the right data? Um, understanding the form and uh, the, the history of the data is really important too. Um, many times uh, a data platform or a data infrastructure will be set up without any input of the data science team. So what you end up with is a lot of rework, a lot of manual intervention to get the data in a place where it's actually usable uh, by the data science team. So let, let's, let's move forward here to what are the things that are driving this broad adoption of Jupyter. Um, I, I think the poster session the first night was really interesting because you got to see uh, all of these different teams that are working on really interesting challenges and applying Jupiter to solve those challenges. Uh, what we've seen is that uh, there is a common link now. Every industry is focused on data science. Everyone's building out a team. And the role of a data scientist and a data science team has really changed. And this is a, a fairly recent change where you know, they, they may have been an R&D function, they may have been doing uh, back office work, they may have been doing more of a research focused uh, outputs, but now what they do is directly impacting the entire business. So teams in HR, teams in finance, uh, teams in marketing are directly using and directly applying the outputs of the data science team. And there's no longer this distinction between, oh, you know, this is a, a data science project where we'll get a, a piece of analysis. Uh, the output of the data science team is now driving every interaction that that business has with their consumers and partners that they work with. The second one, I think, you know, there's a reason here why I was talking to Fernando that more people showed up than they expected to this conference, and the conference exists now. So. Uh, Jupiter is growing, it's growing faster. Uh, we, we built a tool to do some analysis on the open source repos and some of the activity around those and use it internally. Um, and it's actually available if anyone wants to check it out. It's on our website, uh, datascience.com trends. And you know, this is just a, a little snapshot of that to say, okay, well, how are people using Jupiter and how is the growth of Jupiter? And you could see uh, this rapid, steady, continuing growth of uh, Jupiter. Uh, you shift over to understanding the ecosystem of packages around Jupiter as well. And uh, uh, the trend is very clear. Uh, you know, even in the last year, we're seeing tremendous growth. So it's exciting to see um, the community's growth, the community's involvement, and the continued innovation around the Jupiter ecosystem. Uh, it's becoming the tool of choice. Um, we're seeing this at the customers that we work with. Uh, they're, they're requiring Python. They need Python to be a core use case for their team. Uh, they're using Jupyter extensively. Uh, they're using it in, in very innovative ways. Um, and this uh, shift to Python and open source and Jupyter, uh, we see it continuing. So in these last few years in, in rolling out our platform um, and working with various teams, we, we definitely have seen some common themes across these high-performing teams. So what are they doing? How are they actually uh, applying data science, applying these tools in ways that are uh, delivering successfully on the promise of data science and driving impact at the business? So this would be the first. So the, the, the disconnect between uh, a data science team and an engineering team shouldn't exist. They should be tied at the hip. They should be twins. <laughs> uh, they should be aligned on the, the common set of tools, the common set of uh, development best practices uh, to ensure that when you get to the end result of what the data science team has produced, which is typically you know, some type of model that can be used uh, within the organization, that it doesn't require a, a whole series of steps after that to actually move through the pipeline of production systems. So if those teams are coordinated, if they're working hand in hand, if they have alignment on uh, what tools to use, the process around uh, development, uh, you know, some people call it DevOps for data science. Uh, data ops is also a term that's been thrown around. But this idea that 
uh, engineering and data science are uh, becoming more intertwined and need to be working uh, more closely together. The second is, uh, you know, it's, it's something nobody loves, but, you know, what, what is our process? How do we build a, a model factory? How do we build a data science workflow that uh, everybody at the company understands? They can review the steps in the process. Uh, they have exposure into where the team is in terms of the development process. Uh, they have the ability to ask questions. They have the ability to review uh, model development, provide input. Uh, what this does is it, it helps move the process faster. It, it creates a, a clear uh, opportunity for the team to give input. And it also ensures as you move through that cycle and you get to the end result, uh, you're actually going to deliver what your internal stakeholders are looking for. And finally, I think the the platform approach, uh, you know, whether you build one internally or use one of the providers that are here at the conference, uh, it's really, it, it's, it's going to help in the short term, but also the long term. So, you know, if you, you grow from a, a team of one or two data scientists to hundreds or thousands, uh, not having a consistent, cohesive technology approach to how you interact with all of these systems uh, leads to trouble down the road. Uh, you have some issues with, uh, you know, knowledge transfer. So as, as teams change and shift and move on from the company, uh, how do you maintain that core IP that's been developed from the data science team? Uh, if you think of all the systems that are required to actually interact with, uh, whether they be Hadoop data lakes or other internal systems, um, the out-of-the-box tools, the, the kind of standard set of tools that are out there, there's some challenges in, in accessing those data sets and working with them in a consistent way. So where do they fit in? Uh, what, are, what are data science platforms and how do they fit into this broad ecosystem? Um, they, they definitely don't live on their own. Um, I think you know, they are one piece of this uh, technology landscape that we're seeing uh, larger enterprises start to adopt. Um, they need to connect into all of the tools that data science teams prefer to use. Uh, they need to work with all the common libraries and machine learning tools that people are, are using today. Uh, but importantly, for, especially for the, the IT teams and the teams that uh, are, are thinking about security and data governance, uh, they need to connect to those systems too. And they need to do it in a consistent way, in a repeatable way, uh, in a way that's in line with the uh, technology and engineering team's requirements as well. Uh, and in the end, they, they aren't uh, typically creating entire new data ecosystems. They should connect into the existing data ecosystems. So uh, most teams have made big investments and big bets in either using a cloud provider or developing a data lake, and uh, this is a, a way to get value out of those. Um, so with that, I'll wrap it up. Uh, we are here. If you haven't stopped by, we have a booth just outside the door, and uh, we'd love to show you what we do. All right. Thank you.